Hello. Hello, welcome. Just sit anywhere. Don't worry about what's on your card right now. Hello. Welcome. Hi, I'm Miss Maroney. Just have a seat anywhere you like for the time being. <laughs> Okay. Does everybody have a card? Oh, yes. there's more people coming. Hello. Here you go. Don't worry about what's on your card just now. Have a seat wherever you like. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Welcome. Mm. No? Sure. You want one? There you go. Okay. All right. Yeah, have a seat right there. That's great. Okay. No, you can sit there for now. We might move. Okay. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'm Miss Maroney, and this is a sixth grade language and literature classroom. Okay. Um, today, we are starting a new unit, and it is a literature circle unit, and you are going to be reading your own book and leading your own book discussion. I will just be facilitating. I'm here to help, but I am not in charge, okay? Um, the statement of inquiry for this unit is here, and since we're all adults, you can read this, but I want to say that this unit is designed with three different novels, and within each novel there's a main character that is taking action. And we're going to use these novels to inspire our final research projects for the school year. And you are going to raise awareness about an issue that you feel passionately about. Okay? So we're going to start our lesson off with a little four corners discussion. And so I'm going to put a statement up on the board. And you're going to think about if you strongly agree with the statement, you're going to come stand over here. If you agree, you're going to come stand over here. And if you strongly disagree, maybe hang out over here. And if you disagree, you can be in this vicinity. OK? Any questions? OK, first statement. The first statement is, everyone has the power to change the world. OK? So get up out of your chair and pick a corner. Strongly agree. Agree, strongly disagree, and disagree. And you know what? Why don't you guys um, stand over here, if you don't mind, the agrees. And the strongly disagrees, if you could scoot up a tiny bit. OK. Nice. We have a little we'll spread here. OK. So if you have the yellow ball, you get to speak, OK? So, um, and we're going to respect who's speaking, and if you would like to speak, just raise your hand and you get the ball, okay? So, who would like to start, share your opinion, why do you agree or disagree with this statement? All right, Kate. <laughs> nice catch, Kate. Every action can make an impact. Thank you. Thanks for starting us off. Any, uh, anyone who disagrees? Any opposing viewpoints want to share why you disagree? Are you ready to catch? No. Okay. <laughs> there you go. But I'll say that I think sometimes people lack a platform to share your ideas. Sometimes they're, they don't have a microphone to share. Wow, that's a great point. Something to add. Sure. Like another aspect is that they are burdened by other things and don't have the bandwidth to communicate. Okay. Do you want to throw it back? Anyone else? Or we can move on to the next statement. OK. This one might be a little, little spicier, OK? Uh, religion is used for more harm than good in today's world. OK, so think about where you stand on this issue. Religion is used for more harm than good in today's world. OK, so let's see. Are you guys in the agree group or the disagree? You're in the agree. You're in the agree. D 
disagreeing still. You're still disagreeing, and you are strongly disagreeing. Never mind. Okay. Uh, um, okay, who wants to start us off? Go ahead. So I think that social media sometimes writes the narrative that we don't always want to hear just because they want you to look at their post or sit down and watch what they're saying on the news. So I think social media plays a big part in it. That's a good point. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? Do you want to share? Okay. Uh, just in light of recent events and the sheer numbers of people that have been impacted, you know, harmed in the name of religion across time, I strongly disagree. I mean, I strongly agree. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Not just today, but historically as well. Historically. Okay. You ready to catch? Yeah. All right. Watch out, everyone. <laughs> nice. Um, I would, if I was moving around, I would come over to your side. So I, it was persuasive what she said, but I also started with because I think there's a difference between religion and spirituality. And religion, to me, implies some type of hierarchical structure that requires control, and that's usually helpful. OK. Thank you for sharing that. There is a difference. Any final comments before we do our last statement? Nice catch. <laughs> No, absolutely. Thanks for sharing. Okay, our final statement is about education. Okay, um, most people do not appreciate the opportunities an education gives you. Most people do not appreciate the opportunities an education gives you. <laughs> Interpret it as you will. Most people, okay, pick a corner. Okay. I would love to hear from somebody new or somebody who feels passionately about this topic or somebody who has adults in mind, high schoolers in mind. All right. Oops, sorry about that. I'm going to take the statistical approach. Sure. I think the majority of humans, at least in the U.S., are elder, older. And so I think once you, as you get older, you appreciate education more. And the impact of that. So the older you get, then you start appreciating education. Okay. I yeah, you did. <laughs> but you're allowed to talk again. She talked, too. Uh, I think, you know, when you talk to people about a formative experience that they have had in their lives, a lot of people talk about a teacher that meant a lot to them. And so I think there are a lot of people who do appreciate the opportunities, maybe not necessarily in the moment, although even in the moment, have an education. Maybe. Okay, thank you. All right, guys, let's go back to our seats. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> okay. So, um, don't get comfortable because if you were given a long walk to water card, you could please sit here or here in the long walk to water group, okay? If you were giving a rolling warrior card, please sit here or there. And if you are Malala, you can join a group that has a stack of books titled I Am Malala. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, sure. Um, which group is a little light? Okay, that one. Here you go. <laughs> Over there. Okay, great. So, um, we have been practicing these rules all year, and in front of you there are four sheets of paper. So, if there are three people, you can put one to the side, okay? So, you can choose if you want to summarize today's reading, 
If you want to lead the discussion about today's reading, you're going to write down questions that you have. You're going to decide, do you want to be the connector? Are you going to make personal connections to what you read today or connect it to current events or another novel you've read or a movie you've seen? Um, or do you want to illustrate? Illustrate something that the reading reminded you of or something really important from today's reading and you also have to write about its significance, okay? So take a moment to choose your role. So talk to your group and if you both want the same role, you can do rock, paper, scissors, okay? What? Oh, great, thank you. Perfect. Okay, so all of these sheets are different, so just choose what you feel strongly about. Where do you think your strengths lie? What's the connector? Connector would be like, um, how can you make a personal connection to, okay. you know, somebody going through something similarly, or you have experienced it, or it reminds you of a book you read. I mean, there's a lot of ways to connect, so you can pick one of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or it reminds you of a movie you've seen, or something going on in the news. Okay. Okay, that's helpful. Okay, cool. Raise your hand if you need help selecting your role. All right, no one raised their hand. All right, no, wait, hold on. You, don't worry, you're not falling behind. So, uh, a long walk to water. You're going to read chapter one, okay? You don't have a prologue, so you're reading chapter one. Malala, you're going to read the prologue. So open up to the prologue. And Rolling Warrior, you're going to read the prologue. You may have some extra time, so you could start reading chapter one as well, okay? You're going to have five minutes to read. We all read at different paces. I'm going to set the timer. You can start now. And when the timer goes off, then you'll complete your roll, and I can give more directions after that, okay? So we're all reading uh, silently. I'm going to start my timer on my music.
We have about a minute left. If you're done, you could start your roll. And if you're not done, just take another moment to finish your section. Okay, so <clears throat> before we engage in our book discussion, <coughs> we're going to complete our role, and then I'll give you some directions on how to lead your own discussion about today's reading, okay? So I'm going to set the timer for five more minutes. If you're still reading, uh, first finish your reading, and then you can start your role, okay? So who's that? The little boy. Okay. So that's Salva. <laughs> Love it. I like this role. This is a fun one. And if you're having trouble with your role, just raise your hand and I can come over and help you. is hard, right? It's a, it can be a challenging role. Uh, sure. It's <laughs> a good question. Oh, what's this? Why did that stand out to you in this portion? Excuse me, I'm just going to squeeze past you. Anyone over here need any help with their role? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyone here over here need any help with their role? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the connector, I love the connector role. Yeah. I mean, I love all the roles, I guess, but um, the connector and the illustrator are a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. The illustrator. Yeah, they have to write, though. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh. The child soldiers, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't covered in chapter one. But, but it, it reminded you of that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's a great connection. And the religion was briefly mentioned. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is an amazing personal connection, <laughs> yeah. Okay, we got about a minute and a half. If you're done early, you can edit your writing, reread for clarity, or you could keep reading it in the novel if you didn't finish your section. <laughs>
<laughs> you can always help a group member if they're having some trouble as well. Right, absolutely. So like um, refugees being forced out of their homes. Yeah. It's a great connection. Absolutely. Um, but I'm not writing one paragraph. Sorry. Your grade will reflect it. Yes. <laughs> People are going all in on the illustrations, maybe not going all in on the writing. <laughs> Okay, guys, finish your thought, and I'm going to give you some directions for your book discussion. Okay. All right, so um, discussion directors, even though you're the director, you're not necessarily going to share your questions first. We're going to start our group discussion with the summarizer, recap today's reading. You can read your summary that you wrote down. Then discussion director, you could, maybe for the sake of our lesson today, you could choose your favorite question, maybe your most thought-provoking question, and then allow your group to discuss it. Don't just move on to the next role. Actually um, consider um, how you would like to answer that. And discussion directors, you can answer your own question as well. Then the illustrator, you can show off your beautiful artwork and explain why that was significant to you with today's reading. And lastly, the connector can share their connections to today's reading, okay? Um, does anyone have a question before we move into our discussion? Yes? With the kids, do you ro have them rotate the roles? Yeah, and we, we can talk more about that okay. afterwards, but absolutely, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, one more, one last thing. If you are having trouble um, figuring out how you want to respond to your classmates, you could use some of these conversation starters to help you respond respectfully um, if you disagree or want to state your opinion, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, summarizers, do your thing, and then move on to the next role, okay? Oh yeah, you guys don't have a summarizer, that's right. Yeah. So what was your question one more time? And this is a real story, so it's like, where, what do you think we went? Do you guys have any like predictions? There's a lot of different options, but um, yeah, the first one was to go into the, the basically the bushes to hide so that you weren't noticed, and not to go into the village because that's where they were going to end up. Absolutely. Uh, so they'd follow, walk to the water. It makes sense actually to follow a river or whatever the book is. Making a connection with the tile. Very smart. <laughs> That's a great question. What do you guys think? Does having a disability bring stigma to your, if your child or sister? Burdens, you said? Yeah. To the extent that maybe like curiosity can be close to stigma. That was what I was thinking about. Was like, for example, children who have not seen someone maybe 
young towards them and they are like looking at someone yeah, like they're curious like what is, is that stigma or is that curiosity is that the is it all of that do you know like I think all of that like can completely depend on like two main factors right? like how is that handled in the family unit right like when it happens cause absolutely you can't do you mind do you mind repeating one of your questions um, how does Malala feel about living in Birmingham England use evidence to support oh living? right and then tell about a time when you felt displaced or had to move how did it make you feel? Give examples. Of oh, that could and that could connect to you too. Have you guys ever had to move, or where did you have to move? Really? So, so from the first places I did, so I um, she was like having these um, different emotions, so feeling the good and the positive for being in England, um, but at the same time missing. Um, Maybe the tradition of the life. Like, she mentioned how she really didn't care about the stuff in her home. Mm -hmm. but she was missing the trophies because she used to have that dream. You know. Oh. Okay. Great. All right, guys. We're gonna take about one more minute. One more minute. I haven't been able to meet with you guys yet. Did I miss it all? Oh, no. No, because you haven't gotten the connection. Oh, okay. You haven't the connection. Okay. So are we, do you have any more questions? Because that was a really great question. Well, I guess, like, so we can get on to the connection part, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah. We were talking about how the little snippets that we got in terms of the culture, the practice, you know, the boys went off to school, the girls to help. He had siblings from his dad's other wives. Mm -hmm. Oh, you picked up on a lot in just the first chapter. Wow. Fascinating. <laughs> So well, you should read it. It's a great book. <laughs> You're hooked. I'm yes. hooked. Yeah. <laughs> great. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. Okay, guys. I hate to stop. I hate to interrupt. Any final comments? Okay. We need more time. Yeah, I know. I know. You guys, honestly... Uh, it was really fascinating to walk around and hear the personal connections people were making and the questions. Like, that was phenomenal. And we only read a little snippet of the book. So everyone give yourselves a little pat on the back. That was great. <laughs> you are amazing. So this will be a great time. Uh, we're not going to do it, but this will be a great time for if you were in The Rolling Warrior, you could pair up with someone from another book and share kind of um, predictions you have for what you're going to read about and something you're a little bit excited about for this unit. Um, we're not going to do that right now. And we can just move on to any questions that you may have. <laughs> is this um, an eighth grade book or is it sixth grade? This is for sixth grade. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are they working on it now? Oh, so this is something, that's a great question. This is at the end of the school year. Okay. So this is something we're working towards, okay. right? Great. So um, like the roles. Mm -hmm. um, if you were a student, I couldn't just say, here, do this. We, we have to practice the roles um, before I could allow kids to lead their own discussion and choose their own role. Okay. Although I love giving students choice because it motivates them to mm -hmm. um, be a little more invested. Um, yeah, go ahead. Absolutely not. I was like, I was like, whoa! They all got the reading done in five minutes. That was amazing. Like, no, we would spend a lot more time with the reading and completing the role. Like, you would need a lot more time. And the four corners activity, um, I would also probably include a few more statements and then tie it into like an anticipation guide before just jumping into reading the book. So, like more pre-reading activities before starting the reading to build background knowledge. And how much reading is occurring in the class versus... So a lot of reading is being done in the class. Um, in sixth grade, we do genre studies. So that is reading outside of the classroom, 
another way that students have choice. We, although if the genre is fantasy, they get to select a novel within that genre and they read at home and complete the assignments at home. Um, the books that we read in class, we for the most part read in class. Mm -hmm. So the past few years, you know, when we were teaching online, it was like, okay, now we're all going to read together and we all are, okay, we're on page one, okay, we're listening or Johnny's reading and we're, or I'm reading and we're following along. But now we're moving away from like whole group, we're all doing the same thing at the same time. And these are leveled groups, so um, based on your MAP scores. I'm going to put you in a group where I think you can find success because you're going to do most of this on your own. That's currently the case? You're, they're grouped by math score currently? Uh, well, currently they're all in the same class, right? So once we get to this unit, um, they're going to be grouped based on their map scores. But <clears throat> right now we're reading Chew on This. And so. I can also, we're all reading to you on this, but some of us might be reading silently, some of us might be reading in a group with me, and then I may give like a differentiated task. So we're working on the text structure as cause and effect, um, and I may give like a, a structured cause and effect, uh, like graphic organizer, and I may give one that is unstructured to allow for more creativity and multiple answers, if that makes sense. Yeah. Would you have um, taught a small lesson before this? Absolutely. That, I think a lot of lessons would have been taught before doing this. Um, well, lessons on the, mem the group members will like, yes. another type of lesson? Like, um, 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 yeah, before reading a book, especially if we're not going to read it together, we would have um, an anticipation guide. And we would have, go on a book walk look, using the text features, look at the cover, go through the table of contents, um, names of chapters, what stands out to you, and stuff like that. And we have like a book trailer, and we have um, videos about some of the characters. Because Judy Human is a real person, Salva Dutt is a real person, Malala is a real person. So building some background knowledge for the students before diving into reading the novel on their own. Yes. Okay. Yes. From the beginning of the year? Oh, I'm sorry. No, not from the beginning of the year. So um, we are reading to you on this, and then we're going to read Clean Getaway, and then we're going to go into our literature circles. So they'll okay. be differentiated then. Yeah. So at the beginning of the year, you're all reading the same book? Yes. So when you're reading the same book, do you ever share out loud um, these perspectives across groups? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So kids are in on the same conversations, but they may be um, approaching it in different ways. They may be receiving more support or less support. But I mean to share different life experiences, like connecting to the same book in different ways. Absolutely. Yeah. How long does it take to um, put together these kind of systems, who are you relying on like in terms of a team, and then what kind of institutional administrative supports do you have to get that kind of So we, um, the LNL department, we had days where we were not teaching in the classroom, where we were totally just planning this unit. So throughout um, last year and the previous year. So this took multiple days to plan. And um, what was your next question? I guess do you like, how much of this is a team effort, and what kind of supports do you have to make sure that team effort works? Like, to put this together, because like the math right. teacher, I mean, this is a lot of. I can just see all the planning behind it. Right. Well, and, so yeah, it. And, and also the data analysis for the kids to get them into the groups. So the data analysis is done by moi, uh, all by myself, and uh, the planning to put this unit together. Uh, we had the support of Amy and Miata. 
but it was the four um, L and L teachers in sixth grade. Yep, maybe five. I don't want to misspeak. I don't want to leave anyone out, but it was the sixth grade L and L group of teachers. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I don't know if this is a question for you. Sure. Maybe Dr. Glassner, but like, how does um, the detracking for literature start to look? What does it look like for middle school and then, um, I guess, high school? prior to AP, you know, like? Um, a lot of the strategies, and other folks who will be restricted also weigh in here, um, a lot of the kind of strategies that you saw in this classroom are also strategies that are being used at other grade levels and in other subjects. Uh, the goal is really to provide each student uh, with kind of what we sometimes call the Goldilocks level of learning. They're kind of just the right level of learning where they're really being pushed, um, which is usually pretty individualized or personalized. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that means that flexible grouping is really important for that kind of learning. Uh, that means that differentiation structures is really important. Uh, that means that the teacher having the ability to work individually or with small groups of students is really important. And we see that really kind of carrying through uh, many of our grade levels and subject areas. The other piece I would mention, um, and Mary maybe understated this, the importance of that collaborative planning. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the team working together, the support that uh, folks like Deonta and Amy provide uh, is really important. The piece that we're adding now, um, or focusing maybe a little more on, is the vertical alignment. So really making sure that you know what students are learning in sixth grade goes into seventh grade. We have done more of that work in mathematics. Uh, we've done some of that work in many other terms. Mm -hmm. So again, Mary and others, feel free to jump in. Did that good. answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I just want to share a little bit about just IDE and how you started with the statement of inquiry. Mm -hmm. You said, do you want me to share about yeah, that? Yeah, just talk about IB and the, your planners and your statement of inquiry and how that kind of thing. Sure. Uh, well, to be honest with you, I'm really new to IB. So the some of the units that I've walked into, these um, statement of, statements of inquiry were already created, right? So we haven't been able to... I haven't had to create anything from scratch as far as a new statement of inquiry, but we developed this whole new unit because what we were doing before wasn't working for all students. So um, it was like, if our goal is to have a student-led literature circle, how can we get to that point throughout the year? Um, and does that, do you want to add to that? Sure. Um, so something with, I mean, when Mary started, she put up like the statement of inquiry, which in the QIP is called the Central Idea, is what guides the unit in, in the middle years program. It's a statement of inquiry, and it should be this like big idea that's based in a concept, but then what you teach is getting towards. Like when I, I often describe it to people, it's like when you run into the student five years down the road at high end, it's like, what's the big idea you want them to yeah. remember mm -hmm. from this unit? And it's not necessarily this quote by this character on this page of the book, it's this idea of like, literature inspiring people to take action to make a change. And so right. this whole unit, like when she started, was talking about how there's three different texts where that's exactly what the main character does, right? The main character inspires action. And while these texts are leveled to meet students' reading needs, they're engaging with this idea throughout. They do articles of the week throughout that connect with how people take action. And it culminates in a research project of their own where students are learning and applying research skills, thinking about characters that they were inspired by in these books, and then a cause that they want to take action on and link to. And so it's that, it's like carrying that theme throughout and not just focusing on um, what's happening in a book. So the book is the vehicle to the <laughs> understanding and provides the literature to teach text features and cause and effect and summarization and things like that, um, but working towards that later.
Okay. Um, so one of the themes that I've heard from parents around the community who are new to the district is um, challenges around behavior and disruptive behavior. And when we were reading, it's really helpful to have quiet environments, be able to focus. So I'm wondering if you could just comment on whether that's been a substantial challenge and how you address it. Sure. So we did this last year, and there are days when we are all reading silently, and a student who might be a little fidgety or something, you know, they can stand at their desk. If they want to use audio as an option, they can use that as long as they're following along in the book. Um, and believe it or not, there have been days when we're all reading out loud in our groups, and maybe I have one groups in the hallway, and maybe with a, a, kid, a group that has some behavior challenges, I might spend a little more time with them on certain days when it's appropriate. But um, this allows them to find success. So you find a lot of those behavior issues curved when students are like able to do it, right? So a lot of times kids act out because they feel overwhelmed. I can't complete this task, so I'm going to act a fool. And this allow this is assign to kids things that they can do yeah yeah go ahead really truly presenting the behavior issues as a roadblock to this is um makes sense on the outside but then as a teacher i know that if my kids are acting out it's because i missed i they're, they're frustrated or they have something going on outside and so right. what you said is perfect like this Differentiation is the answer to a lot of behavior issues in, in the class and kids feeling like they're not involved. The hard part is differentiating accurately and making sure that all kids can feel successful. It's right. really tough. Yeah. And you know, if it's if it's not working and on a particular day, you're you're reading by yourself today. You couldn't you couldn't follow the expectations. Let's try again tomorrow. Whoa, a lot of hands. All right, go ahead. <laughs> so given that the kids at some point are grouped like by map score mm -hmm. and like are reading kind of different material, yeah. is the primary difference with like detract versus pre-detract just that all of the kids are in the same classroom? Uh, go ahead. So this is a similar uh, question from the last time. Great. Um, Thanks for taking right. the reins. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, Don't mean no. To throw so, no, no, it's a good question. So one of the things is that the question last time was like, what's the difference between classrooms prior to detracking and then now, mm -hmm. right? So it's not just that students are together, but going to like just the strategy of literature, the literature circles that uh, Mary and the rest of the team decided to do, and many other teachers um, decide to do, is that that would usually be done in an advanced course or an honors or whatever it was called or enriched level course mm -hmm. and students that were in a core level would never get that. Okay. And so now all students have the opportunity to engage in lit circles, which they should have anyway. So that goes to like mindset, expectation, all of that kind of stuff. But the way it was differentiated is based on all of the data from this year, you know, because they're going to do this in the spring mm -hmm. to say like, I believe that you're able to do this regardless of which book it is, right? And the expectation is that everyone is going to lead in this discussion, um, as opposed to some students are able to lead and others are not. Because this is a skill that they all have to learn how to do to collaborate, to listen, to ask hard questions, you know what I mean? To be, to understand all these different roles. <coughs> every student has an opportunity and be able to find success in that. I had one other thing that was actually, I was visiting uh, Woodbury earlier today, I got to see some of the mentor classes. One class I was in, uh, the teacher divided students up into partners. Uh, it was heterogeneous groups for this activity. And talking with students, it was clear that th these weren't the groups that they were always in. They, it was flexible in nature. Um, in the past, there are many students in that class who whenever had the opportunity to work together. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, um, they, if it happened last year and kids were like, well, why am I in this group? And I would say it's based on your MAP scores and this is where I think you can find success. Um, some kids might have been upset initially, but then when I gave them a survey to end the unit, they were very happy with the novel that they read and the group that they're in. They didn't have it wasn't like I felt like I was stupid or I felt better than other, I mean, nobody would probably admit to feeling better than other people, but um, the feedback was really positive about the novel that they had read. And even, it, I even asked the question, do you wish I had let you choose your group? And kids were like, no, I was happy with where I was. Initially, they might've been like, oh, it's based on your map scores and you're leading your own group and this is where you can I believe you can do well. And it's, it's not, we're not starting the year with this, right? Mm -hmm. So we, have, we also have a relationship and they understand who I am as a teacher as well. And that, at, that I have their best interests in mind. You know, maybe if I did this the first month of school, it might feel offensive to kids, but at that point in the year, they know that I am pushing them to be their best. Um, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I think a long walk to water is a little below sixth grade reading level um, so the rolling warrior is I would say about on grade level and Malala is a little bit higher absolutely Mm -hmm. So even students with dyslexia might be in the Malala group and they still can use assistive technology and participate in a read aloud and then when they're reading on their own use the audio and that works for them. Yeah. Um, you had a question? So with writing, um, for example, if we are assigning a four-paragraph essay, um, you're writing a four-paragraph essay, but we might modify it for some students to write a three-paragraph essay, or at the beginning of the year, a single paragraph, right? Um, our next essay is going to be a five-paragraph essay, but we may modify that for students um, who aren't able to write that many paragraphs yet. Go ahead. Um, going back to measures, so I've been to all three sessions now. Okay. And um, <laughs> I, I guess I don't have still a super clear sense of, of the various measures, like soft and hard, objective, subjective, surveys, AP enrollment, like across the board of how, how we're measuring the evolution of the D-tracking process. So we could kind of clarify that again. Anything from student surveys around like engagement, what do you feel like you've learned, how well do you feel like you've been challenged or stimulated at appropriate levels to more hard measures? Like, yeah. Um, so at the district level, we do have a set of key performance indicators that we are measuring and monitoring. Uh, that really includes data, uh, quantitative and qualitative data. say that that district data is also in addition to the data that we monitor at every building level. So every building, for example, has a school improvement plan where they focus on, they take some of that district-wide data and translate it into uh, what makes sense at this, these particular grade levels. Um, and then, of course, there are class-specific or subject-specific district level, there are those key performance indicators that we're monitoring uh, to really kind of assess the effectiveness of the building. For some of those, like the more, or, or <coughs> for any of these measures that are associated with more qualitative ones, do you have those from pre-district? 
Great question. Uh, we do not. Um, and I mean, I guess I would say we have evidence of how tracking is. Um, we adopted the, the qualitative survey that we moved to the MMS survey. Uh, we adopted two or three years ago because we really wanted to have a, a district wide sense of how our students uh, were doing. We had done some kind of, we had some type of qualitative survey before. Uh, and showed, I think, uh, some of the same disparities. Okay, in thanks student, for coming. Uh, responses that we see in Take academic care. metrics. Yeah. Uh, the Panorama survey is a survey that uh, allows us to compare our data across the district. It also allows us to compare our data across other districts that are also doing surveys. So it's the ability to na nationally compare uh, data, which we did on that. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. You can take your papers with you or you can toss them out on your way out. They're not going to be graded, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Miss Mar Mary Maroney. Yeah, nice to meet you. Absolutely. Aww. Not that long, unfortunately. My baby's four, and he's already too old. Yeah. That's an amazing book. Isn't it? The prologue, doesn't it hook you? It pulled me, and I took a picture of it. Oh, my God. And then I told Mom, and I was like, guess where I am. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. <laughs> you know, I love your son. He's, oh he's amazing. I just don't want him to know it, because then he'll get a, no. a big head. He, he thinks everybody thinks he's amazing. So okay. <laughs> Well, thanks Thank for coming. I, I hope this was helpful. I hope you got out something that you wanted out of.